I, I didn't want to get any interfere with whatever you were doing with the other gentleman you were working with. There's no interfering. There's no okay. interfering. There's the other thing. There's the other thing, um, and that wouldn't be interfering either. But there, you know, there's there's a uh, Python code there. You can post that. Uh, you can play with that as well. Um, again, everyone who jumps in, always always welcome. So, hi, Andre. Andre, hi, everybody. Um, posting the agenda again. Okay, so um, let's get started here off the bat. I have some uh, updates, and then I uh, want to go around. So I will actually open up the agenda, and yes, and I will share my screen. Yes. Okay. Great. So um, I think Mike won't be able to join us. Um, don't know about Porig, Mateo? Porig, Porig is in uh, Hungary, so I okay. doubt. So might not be able to. All right. So um, updates since last time. So first of all, the GitHub milestones. Thank you, everybody, who um, who has uh, contributed to that. Oh, I guess I could actually change the link because it links to the ones that don't don't have issues. So we've now um, we've now filled in pretty much all the milestones on GitHub with issues. And uh, and what's nice is that as as the issues start getting closed, uh, we start to get a progress bar on here, which is very cool. Um, so all of these at least have one issue, and and uh, looks like none of them have. Uh, okay, this one just has. Yeah, this one has one open, but all of them at least have two issues ass assigned to them. So thank you for that. Also, thank you, um, for folks, um, uh, who've noticed this uh, this tag here, this working tag, which uh, just indicates. The fact that uh, you know one of you are um, are working on a, a given thing, I think this is really nice not only for us to keep ourselves organized, but it's also really nice because um, I'm I'm now pointing people to these issues outside the project, and I'm saying like this is where you know we keep our regular plan. So as you um, as you make updates and as you you know finish things off, um, feel free to go ahead and, and uh, update the tag to the next thing that you started working on and removing them from the one that you have worked on because um, like the public is coming in and having a look and, and, and seeing you know what's going on on a regular basis and uh, and checking in so thanks I think um, a lot of you guys have done that and uh, I've been trying to keep up with it as well um, so let's let's keep that process up but th this is very nice um, I think it's I think it's the best system that we've had so far for tracking this stuff yeah um, Okay, the open worm wiki uh, updates on that from me. Uh, actually, I think this is now the best link again for that. So, like that. Um, so I've uh, I did some work on this in the last two weeks myself. Um, so three new pages: introduction, concepts, project overview. Some of you I've pointed to this already. Um, I'm particularly happy with the first part of the of the project overview: describing neuromechanical modeling. Um, some new diagrams uh, that I put together for this, um, and then this project overview as well. Uh, after I built this uh, this last week, I um, I sort of kicked myself the fact that we haven't had this uh, before. But I just wanted to go over it really quick. Um, none of this is, should be new. I'm just sort of capturing, you know, what I think that we're already all working on. But I've started with data data collection representation. Um, uh, where I've got some, some data visualization, working on the cell and neuron list, synapse position database, neuropeptide ion channel database. Um, we've got some great new stuff from Tim on that just today. Um, this stuff feeds into the NeuroML connectome. Uh, and, uh, and then, um, so the solid lines here are things that exist today. So both solid boxes and solid arrows and sort of showing relationships between things. Dotted lines are things that we're working on in this, um, in this release, broadly speaking. Um, this is this diagram is uh, is uh, should be shared, pretty sure it's shared with all of you in in the Google Drive. So um, if there's anything here you disagree with, or you'd like to augment or, or fix, um, any edits that you make will automatically uh, flow into this diagram live. So as soon as you save it, it'll update. So um, just be aware <laughs> that uh, don't leave it in a partial state because it'll show up on the on the website. Um, it's called Project Overview. Uh, pretty easy to search for. Um, but anyway, so I've, I've marked the muscle cell integration project. And by the way, thanks to Giovanni for helping me put this together uh, earlier this week. I kind of needed the, the push to get this organized. So 
Muscle cell integration, kind of in between. Uh, mechanics and physics is here. This is the SPH stuff. Pedo simulation engine as well here. I've got SPH basically feeding into both the pedo and into the muscle cell integration sort of neuron SPH project. Um, and then some pieces, obviously, that we're in the process of building, the muscle cell mechanical model, worm body mechanical model. Those obviously will also feed into both as we go. Um, optimization work is up here, eventually connecting down here. Um, the neuromel connectome, pointing at the neuro, neur neural solver, obviously that's still, we need to make that arrow stronger. Um, uh, the WebGL front end, which has been coming along quite nicely. And then the other things that we do, community outreach, website publications, journal clubs, social media. So the idea of this is that folks in a, in a single glance should get a sense of all the different things that we're working on across the project um, so they can get a sense of, uh, you know, anywhere in here they can start to, to make contributions. Okay? So that's new stuff. Um, after the data collection and representation point, um, there's a lot of pieces in here that I haven't really gotten into very much. So if these are things that you're working on, um, feel free to start uh, jumping in to this wiki page and just start editing pieces. Uh, I could use the help. Obviously, I've got some outlines here for pieces that uh, haven't started. So um, if you're responsible for some of these, right, um, feel free to just kind of, you know, we don't, we don't need much more than a paragraph and some links out to where things are um, to get people an overview. And again, this is not intended to be exhaustive. And we have many other pages that go into a lot more detail about some of these pieces. This is just intended to be uh, people's first I guess probably their second look at the project, because the idea of introduction is that it's really like, okay, you don't know, you don't know anything about the project. Let me at least convince you that this is a good idea. Concepts is supposed to, you know, have some sort of reference material that explains, okay, just you know, once you get past being convinced that you should care about this, here are some basic things you need to know before anything else is going to make sense. And then project overview is like, okay, now you've had a a little bit of introduction, let me dig in a little bit further, explain to you what it is that we're doing and, and, and how we're doing it. Okay. Um, and so you can see there's quite a few more things I want to get going uh, in here. Uh, I want to you know, make some a, a more of a narrative on the roadmap. I want to point specifically to several of the examples and demos that we've been working on. Um, I want to migrate a lot of the how to get started stuff into here and talk about community stuff. Um, so this is the outline that I'm shooting for, which is up at the top. And then um, here are the old pages that have been converted, uh, some of them better than others. So some of these getting started things are going to move up. But I also want to make sure that we take a second look at these things and make sure that you know all the files that we say are where they are, are, are good, and all the links are correct and all that. So um, that's going to be happening here as we're, as we're moving on. Okay, feel free to jump in if you've got any questions or uh, type in the chat. Okay, um, so more updates. Um, so I spoke with Dr. Andrew Liefer. Uh, he is awesome. He continues to be awesome. He's a C. elegans researcher at Princeton, um, and he has donated some data to us. I'm going to share with you what that data looks like. Right now it's in a separate Dropbox folder uh, because he specifically, he specifically asked us not to share um, these data with uh, with the entire public, um, but any of you on the project are welcome to um, are welcome to play with this. Um, Andrew has uh, excuse me, Alex has already started uh, processing this with uh, OpenCV. I shared uh, I shared a mail on this on the on the discuss list earlier. Um, so very cool stuff. We're already getting started, but let me just show you what this data are. So first of all. This is the first data set out of, out of several that, uh, that Andrew's prepared to share with us. Um, we have to obviously demonstrate that we're uh, going to do something cool with it, and, uh, and we are. But just, uh, just for reference purposes, so this is um, a, a camera that's, you can see, first of all, the camera is, is tracking the C. elegans as it's moving. You see the whole stage is moving. Um, it's, uh, they have some processing that's happened on the movie, so it's uh, segmented the worm. So there's an outline around the worm in every frame that shows you where it is. There's a, a bar of light in the middle here, in the middle section, and that's where a I laser see, light... Are we supposed to see a movie? Sorry. Oh, this... crap. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not hearing the right thing. From Thanks. the way you're speaking. <laughs> Good point. 
I wasn't sharing my whole desktop, just the one the one page. Okay, let's try that again. You see that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the worm. Stage is moving. It's tracking the worm. There's an outline of the worm that uh, that captures its yeah. I mean it's 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 skeleton. There's a circle around the head, circle around the tail. Um, a bar in the middle here is showing where the neuron is in the middle is being stimulated. That is a special neuron that uh, has been uh, in, in impregnated with a uh, active uh, channel. That um, means that when the light is shining on it, it's uh, it's going to be activated. And then you can also see the the reason it's lit up in the middle is because there's a calcium sensor. Uh, that's uh, showing when there's a lot of calcium activity happening inside of that neuron. So it's showing you the relationship between what's happening inside the C. elegans in that particular neuron. Yeah, no, I know. Um, so, uh, yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just sharing a bit of this for demonstrative purposes, uh, but, um, but obviously not sharing the underlying data set, but just so that you guys understand and kind of explaining it. So um, that's a few frames of this, and um, and so more details about exactly what the experiment is or exactly what the neuron is, um, we'll, we can talk about more further. But um, so anyway, uh, so that's cool stuff. And like I said, Alex has already started playing with it with OpenCV. The idea is that we're going to be um, hopefully training up uh, some models of you know ABA with this. So um, if you'd like to play with this data, let me know. Okay. Um, right. So back to this. So I also spoke, so he also referred me then to uh, Dr. Mei Zhen, who I had a good conversation with yesterday. She's at the University of Toronto, and um, she, um, so what we were looking at was an interneuron inside the C. elegans, and she works with motor neurons and also does electrophysiology recordings from muscle cells. So you'll remember that we used, you remember that if you poke the worm, it basically kind of is pressurized and explodes and it loses, loses bodily consistency. But you can then poke the, you can actually stick an electrode into a muscle cell once it's opened up, and you can get recordings from it directly the way that you record from neurons and mice and other things like that. Um, and then you can also, what I, what I was just showing you was something where you don't have to poke the worm at all. You can use light signals coming through the uh, skin of the worm to see the activity of uh, the neurons inside, and that's a calcium sensor. So Mei Zhen, uh, what's cool about what she does is in addition to doing the calcium stuff, she does it on motor neurons, right, which are one level closer to the muscle cell. And she also combines that with recordings directly taken from muscle cells, which is the kind of data that, we, that, we've been, that Mike has been training the muscle cell on already and has done the work there. So both researchers are producing really great stuff um, in, in what they're doing. Um, what Mei Zhen is doing is particularly relevant to us because of uh, how close she is to the data, the data that she's producing, how close it is to the kind of stuff that we're doing. Um, Andrew also does some work with motor neurons, but um, he, his focus is more on sort of the, the internal. So the other thing is that both of them are really excited to see our model in action and would love to start asking questions of a model that we are, that we are putting together and comparing that to hypotheses that they have about their data. So they're, so they're both interested in some kind of collaboration. Obviously, the mechanics of that we still need to work out. But, um, but I think these are some of the first researchers who really would, would love to play ball with us and engage us you know, with our platform and, and start to use it to answer real questions. So I'm super excited about this. Um, so I think now you know, it's up to us to make sure that we continue to drive the engine and uh, what you can in interrogate about the model in the direction that helps them, uh, you know, use it, you know, as soon as we can. Obviously, we know that today we can't do that, but um, but a lot of what we're doing is really setting us up to go in that direction. And it seems like the strategy of starting with a muscle cell and scaling out is gonna is gonna help us do that. Um, so, very cool stuff. Um, I'm super excited. Obviously, we obviously need to keep the ball rolling uh, with this, and um, so uh, they're excited to be listed on our page as contributors as well. So I'd like to update the website with uh, you know with them. Uh, certainly, Andrew and I think May as well. Um, we'll do that. So um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, the thing about these collaborations, sometimes they can take a little while to get started, and and a while in between to you know actually get data shared and that sort of thing. But um, but I think it's very promising. Okay, a few more updates. 
and then I'll be quiet and we'll go around. So uh, the publication meetings have gone uh, well. Uh, most of you have been in them, so I don't need to go on too long about them, but um, I feel like we've started to converge um, on the paper, um, and uh, you, know, you can read the ex extensive uh, comments uh, in, in GitHub about this. Um, don't say a lot more about that. Website upgrade, I'll let Mateo talk more about that, but um, uh, I think that's, that's on the road. Um, I will be planning another set of office hours to happen next Wednesday on IRC. You're all welcome to join. And um, lastly, don't forget to use the uh, Open Worm Discuss mailing list. I've been pointing a few conversations over there if it, they didn't seem to be, you know, super private or anything. So just uh, let's let's keep using that as a good way for folks in the community to see what we're doing. And also, you know, I know we've had a huge long conversation about the Turing test stuff on uh, on GitHub. And that's fine to the extent that we, you know, are answering that that single question. But for the longer, more extensive discussions, I think uh, it'll be better to be archived on the mailing list. And and I know I start I started it on on GitHub, so really it's it's up to me. But let's you know, there's a lot of great stuff that you guys are all thinking of and, and commenting and commentary. And so you know, let's let's use the mailing list um, for for a lot of those extensive comments um, over there. Oh yeah, the the last thing uh, I want to share with you guys, which is really exciting, is um, I told you. Before that, um, that uh, Wired UK is um, uh, looks like there's going to be an article about the project coming up. It looks like that will happen before our next meeting. Um, and I wanted to share with you something else that was really cool about this. Um, the uh, pull this up, yeah. So um, they uh, they got back to us and they asked us. Uh, they, they said in addition to writing up the article, they wanted to have some um, multimedia content to put on the iPad app. Now this is Wired UK, not Wired US. So um, if um, when it comes out, you'll want to get if you have an iPad, you'll want to get you be sure that you're searching for the Wired UK app. But um, they asked for some dynamic content, and um, Matteo uh, knocked on Christian Grove's door again and said, you know, um, could you help us out in Blender? Uh, to do this kind of thing, and uh, this is this is what he produced. It's very it's very short, but uh, basically it's this. And I don't know if the frame rate was all that great when you just saw it. I'll run it again. But basically, it's this cool like animated uh, pull through out of the um, out of the nervous system of the worm, and it's it's uh, rendered in in some really nice high detail. So um, as far as we understand, a movie like this is um, going to be in the dynamic uh, material in the iPad app when the, uh, when the article comes out. Um, so it's, it's supposed to come out in the March issue, but the March issue comes out at the beginning of February. So the February issue came out on, on January 6th. Um, so, and, uh, and it sounds like they're going to uh, include a live hyperlink to the website. Which is, uh, I think, why one of the reasons that Matteo um, is so eager, and I'm so eager to, to make sure that the, all the wiki stuff is up, and that uh, the website is, uh, you know, in a new state. And uh, obviously, we don't want anybody to break themselves, but it seems like in two weeks um, we're going to get a spike of traffic. Um, in the past, when I've had articles written up in sort of fairly large publications, this is what happens: that there's a big lot of traffic. It happens, um, and it's really exciting. But then, you know, after after a little while, you know, it'll it'll start to tail off again, and then, you know, after about a few weeks, it'll go back to you know normal, normal size. But in the, in that time, it's really cool to um, have that. I don't know what the article says. I haven't I haven't approved any text. We can expect that there may be uh, some, uh, you know, a creative license taken with uh, you know with with the text. I, I really don't know what it's going to say. So um, be prepared. But um, but uh, I'm I'm pretty excited. I think it's very cool, and uh, I think it's uh, you know all of all of our efforts have gone into this. I think we should be really proud of all that we've done, you know, to make this so vibrant and exciting. And and I guess the main thing about this is that it'll be an opportunity for us to hopefully get some more volunteers. Um, and so I'm hoping that we can make the site clear enough uh, in in all the things that we're doing. And you know we've got a ton of content. We produce a lot of things. They're out in the public. Um, I just want to make it obvious to folks what they all are. Um, so that they can, you know, see how much is going on and how much we've done. We represent ourselves as as, as best as possible. Okay, so I've talked. That's my 20-minute monologue. I'll be quiet, and we can go on to 
going around to you guys. So, Mike, uh, Mike said he had a meeting with his advisors. He's not going to be able to be here, so um, I will defer his comments to later. So let's turn to Mateo. Okay, and so I've been working just on the website, basically any other uh, development for open world uh, that I am involved in is kind of uh, on a break. And uh, as Stephen was saying, reason why is I would really like to be to look as shiny as possible when uh, the article is out. So I I can share the screen with you. Uh, for the current version, which is on GitHub as always. So uh, tell me if you can see. <laughs> for real. <laughs> so so uh, many things that you will see are still floating around as uh, like the website is in no way finished or polished. But the, the one thing that I've been working on, so you can see down here that we have the bar to basically share, um, they hook up with Twitter to get followers and stuff like that. Then the layout uh, is the vertical layout that is used in, um, in Bootstrap, which is the uh, kind of library that I'm using to build the website this time. So. I have these two columns here. The left one is the blog, and the right one is the social stream. And this is the uh, official Twitter widget, which is nice. It gives people the possibility to tweet to us as well, straight from the website without opening Twitter. And then I'm planning to add some content uh, uh, in vertical just to kind of inspire and quickly show people different aspects of what we're doing. So for instance, I was thinking to focus a little bit on the fact that uh, it, it's, of course, open source. Everything is in the open. Uh, the fact that uh, we are very easy to reach uh, through uh, social media. People can watch stuff on GitHub. And then so you will see that at the top, uh, uh, it is very minimal in terms of uh, what links are available. Get started, get involved, uh, downloads, and donate. And some of the things that uh, before were at the same level now are in the more common um, link bar in the footer. So link to our blog about people, projects, uh, contacts, issues that links to uh, it links already to our GitHub issues, and then roadmap and change log, which already uh, links to the page that Stephen was showing earlier. So the the one thing that um, I worked on so far is the showcase. So you will see here there are two arrows, left and right. And the idea is to give people a glance of all the different things that we're working on in a way that kind of inspires them and gives them uh, quick links to access the various pages. So the first showcase is the Miramal Connectum. So the idea is to have this button here, explore the connecton to go straight into the 3D visualizer in open source brain, where people will be able to play with the connecton, select different cells, see, have a look at what is connected to each one of the I think you can, you can show that, because maybe people haven't seen it. OK, maybe so. Not all, so yeah, maybe so that we know what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, because, because this was um, kind of Unofficially released uh, this week, we're still testing it. But basically, if now you go in uh, open source brain and uh, you go on the explore page where there are all the current projects, at the bottom there is our open world C elegance network model. You can click on that one, which brings up the page. And uh, there is a button called uh, OSB 3D Explorer. And this is a list of all the NML files that we currently have in our GitHub repository in OpenWorm. So the network file is CLEGANS NML. 
And this part is all live right now. This is and th yeah, this is all live, and uh, you can all have a look at these and at all the other projects that are currently in open source. Brain, it's coming along very nicely, I think. And uh, so this is uh, now loading the whole network of the worm, and this is basically what I plan to link from that button. Explore the connector. Okay. Will, will so, there be a way, Matteo, to to link? So that one no, uh, that that way doesn't exist yet. But I will create it uh, before uh, okay. this goes live. Uh, I, I plan to do it in the next days. So you all have seen these, which is the kind of visualizer I'm working with um, at the at the Silver Lab. So uh, where you can select all the cells and you can navigate uh, the basically the connector. And feel free to go and play with it, have a look. It's there for C. And the nice thing is that this is not a snapshot or anything. It's exactly what we have on GitHub. If tomorrow we go there and we update it and we change the, for instance, biophysical properties or whatever, it will show here real time. So I think it's very nice. And so here you see, for instance, for a selected neuron, you see what are the output neurons connected to it, what are the input neurons. It's a very nice way to navigate the connector. And uh, so there are things that are that we can do that are not even possible with a worm browser, for instance, panning and things like that, which makes it really easy. It is possible to exclude the neurons that we're not selecting. So basically, this is one neuron that I selected. These are its inputs. These are its outputs. And this is the rest of the connector. So you can go ahead and click from one cell to the other. So it, it's it's live, open source brain.org, so feel free to go there and play with it. Going back to the website, so this is where I plan to link that. So NeuroML connect home, we capture the position of the cells in the context with each other. We're now building a description of the synaptic junction and the ion channels for each cell. What is the technology used in open source brain team? It is, uh, well, for the, um, I built it. Uh, using tree.js, which is uh, a WebGL library, and uh, Open Source Brain uh, uh, reuses uh, the um, core package of the simulation engine for Open Worm. So the two things, basically, the WebGL front end that uh, I was using um, tree.js, yes. So the front end that uh, uh, we are using in Open Worm, for instance, when we were showing the particles of SPH is the same front end that, that is used there in open source brain. So basically, since everything is open source, I'm obviously not writing twice the same kind of code. Whenever we'll be visualizing the connectome on NeuroML, it will, be, it will look exactly like that. So basically, this is stuff that we can easily reuse. And so next page of the showcase, Geppetto. So the simulation engine. And uh, uh, the idea is to give, uh, basically, uh, uh, as I was saying, an easy way for people to get hooked up with what we're doing. So here I was planning to put latest uh, release and uh, sources for it so that you can go on GitHub and have a look at the code. Uh, next one is the Open Worm browser. We created a trade with browser to enable ready access to a cell-by-cell -cell representation of the C elegance. Uh, get ready to explore in your browser the worm body in three dimensions, peeling off and selecting its different parts. Launch, uh, and this will launch the worm browser that we have. Fluid Mechanics Simulator is the next page I added. We're implementing it. Sorry, Stephen? I, I was just cheering. <laughs> <laughs> so we're implementing an algorithm to simulate the physics of the fluids inside and outside the world because it matters. So I all the texts <laughs> are mine, but uh, the idea is that uh, people reaching out to the website will not only be scientists, will be general public, so we need to make an effort and be uh, as accurate but uh, as easy to understand as possible. So we do have all the details, we do have all the algorithms, but I think there's no uh, wrong in being clear. <laughs> and next one, it is uh, what Mike is doing. Uh, so we're using genetic algorithms to optimize our model to fit experimental data coming from actual cellular recordings. 
evolution to the rescue once again. So sources and documentation which point uh, to the optimal neuron that Mike uh, is built. So uh, there's a start for a getting started page, but it is just in terms of layout, the content is still to be done. So one uh, thing, one thing, Matteo, um, all this is extremely sexy. Um, one thing that I found myself doing uh, in, in most of my explanations of, of what we're doing is, is you know, I, I just can't help but go back to the Cyber Elegance video, uh, you know, on YouTube. So, you know, Andre and Sergey, I'm, I'm totally driving traffic to that. Um, would you guys feel okay if we can, I mean, if, if we can point to that or showcase that? Because it's the one video where I think it makes it very clear. I mean, I was using it just with Meijen the other day, um, where you've got motor neurons, and motor neurons are activating muscles, right? I have this in my... Um, my overview, and I think that it's in a single video, it immediately makes it clear, you know, what we're what we're trying to do, but we're trying to do it in a, you know, we're trying to take the next level up from that. It also makes it clear that we're starting with something, uh, you know, that's actually fairly solid, and and then it gives us a chance to showcase the um, the paper about it. Uh, well, I would put it. Uh, uh, maybe we can put um, in the first uh, in the first step. This get get started or something like uh, uh, cyber elegance, but uh, I, I'm basically thinking that uh, I, uh, I probably wouldn't showcase that as if it was an open warm, uh, I, I mean it's not something that open warm did, it's something that existed before open warm, so I'm all in uh, using it to explain because it, as you say, it very nicely shows the concept, uh, but on the other hand uh, I you know, want Open Worm to take credit of that because that is solely the work of Andre, Sergey, and Alex. I mean, what do you what do you guys think, Andre and Sergey? Oh, Andre, uh, you're you're muted. I think I can see your uh, your lips muting. If you get to that. Try again, Andre. For Alex. Uh, my point of view is that uh, if you think the video is valuable, if you think that it, it can explain something, then definitely we should put it into the website. I mean, we should put every, everything which is helpful that's obvious for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, Mateo, either. But I, I do. I'm just checking in with those guys. I mean, the three of you guys have been with us, you know, right from the beginning, basically. So um, it's up. It's it's your choice. Um, but, uh, I'm I'm not saying to also think that it's a video, so it cannot be in the showcase. As in, it wouldn't be moving in the showcase. So it would be a matter of having a button from which you can open the video. So, and if the guys are okay with it, uh, I would be more than happy to put such button. Yeah. Um, Andre, what do you think? Sergey? Um, I am okay too with this, of course. Uh, if the project uh, needs to use this materials, why not? <laughs> it's useful. It's for the common purpose. So, feel free. Is it, uh, is it possible to embed it into the into our website, not just to give a link to YouTube? Uh, yes, it is possible to have a light box or something like that. I haven't yet uh, embedded any video in this website, but it is definitely possible to do it. So also, I'm it, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it, it, it can be just... Mm, you know, uh, even the player could be just embedded in a page or something like uh, uh, our starting point or something like that that shows the video. Also, the other day, I was I was experimenting with trying to turn it into an animated GIF because there's really there's a few frames that really show make it very clear, and in about five seconds you kind of get it just by looking at it, and then there's probably about. Uh, uh, I mean, five seconds, and then it, there's probably about five more seconds when you're inside the worm, that where you see the motor neuron go on and you see the muscle cell go on. That also makes it very clear. 
So I was trying to just clip those out as animated GIFs. Um, that's another that's another option. The other thing, though, that I find is that the, um, the movie, even if you run it at highest resolution, is still a little bit low res. Um, so you know, if if you want to go there, Mateo, maybe we can ask you know somebody who's got a Windows box to see if we can you know expand the frame of view or something, or maybe I don't know if it would require a code change to to beef up the resolution of it, but in order to make it you know, more clear. I mean, the thing is just that it's the one thing that we can point to that is produced by members of this team that shows a worm moving in the space. And it has muscles and it has neurons. And so it's, um, it, it, it makes the starting point really clear. Okay. Anyway, I don't mean to, I don't mean to take too, too much time, but we can discuss it more offline, but I just want to raise it. Anyway, this is super sexy. Is there any more to, to show? Uh, no. Uh... But uh, any other feedback or things that you know I should know? Uh, one thing is that I'm asking myself is: didn't we say there's gonna there was gonna be a publications uh, section somewhere? Is it at the bottom or was it supposed uh, to be at the top? Well, uh, at, at at the moment it's in. Either it's in either places, but we can add it. Uh, yeah, I will put it somewhere. We 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 discussed uh, we were gonna have it. Uh, no, we we have a few now, so we might as well. Yeah, I was just gonna ask that same question. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, people. Yeah, people. Uh, people is, is at the bottom, I think. It's here. Blog about people. Contact issue. Okay. The usual spot. But you haven't you haven't built those pages out yet. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> are, are you gonna keep the showcase always at the top, or are those pages gonna have a different, you know, header at the top? Uh, well, no. The showcase is just for the home page. Uh, the other pages will look like this. It's just gonna be content, basically. Okay. So you're gonna have the banners there. Are you gonna Are you gonna um, redo the? Um, the quotes that we've had in the past, or uh, mm, not sure, not sure. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, and then, oh, by the way, does that showcase work on the on the iPad uh, with the bootstrap thing, so you can like slide? Uh, well, I hope so. I mean, uh, the one one thing about bootstrap is that it is mobile friendly, so I'm really hoping for that. <laughs> Cool. And also, there's there's a thing. Uh, basically, the showcase keeps going on its own, uh, so it basically automatically goes from one to the other, and it stops if your cursor is uh, on top of the of the current showcase. In that case, it stops uh, flowing. Okay. Brilliant stuff. It's looking really great. All right, so nobody has any more questions. Um, so, Giovanni, I think you're next. Yeah, yeah I'm going? still working on the same stuff, um, porting the latest version of the SP SPH from C++ to Java, and that's getting close to being completed. I'm almost finished. Um, basically, what, I'm almost to the point that I can fit it um, some data to see if it works. And I say almost because there is some new stuff with regards to um, elastic matters uh, in the model, and probably gonna have need help from Matteo with that because he's been generating the model for me since the beginning. So we need to add uh, some some stuff to the model itself. Mm -hmm. um, so once it's, uh, I'd say it's going, it's going well. The problem is with this is that I cannot run it until it's done. So it seems to be going well in the sense that I don't see issue as I'm doing it, but I will see. I mean, something will break for sure. Some, I mean, let's say I forget a variable here, or I do something there. Um, some empty buffer stuff like that, like it's gonna happen just because I cannot run it as I do it. Um, so yeah, well, it's going as well as it can go, really. And Sergey and Andre are being quite helpful answering my questions on that 
discussion thread that I linked. Um, that's pretty much it for me. And also I'm planning to help uh, Matteo a bit more. Once he has templates for the pages, I might help with that, like setting up the rest of the pages um, once we're happy with the templates for the site. So that's pretty much everything from me. Okay. All right, good stuff. Tim? Yeah, <clears throat> so um, I've been doing some data gathering and we um, just put together a spreadsheet. Um, I got it. Sent, sent, yeah, sent it over to um, Stephen uh, last night and uh, have been had a chance to check it out. Yeah, there it is. Um, and basically what I did is I broke this down as to uh, each neuron, uh, what what it, um, what it where, where it's at, what it does, what um, what what uh, the neurotransmitters it uses, what what inexins it uses, uh, the neuropeptides, and then at the and then I break down um, the, the the neurotransmitters and then I break down each one of the uh, neuropeptides. So now that we have this data, um, what I'm trying to do is trying to match the data in a data in, in, in the semantic format that uh, we want how, how we want to represent this data and uh, how we want it to um, to match so that we have a, a certain neuron it connects to a specific type of, of say um, neurotransmitter or specific set of neural peptides and then uh, so people could be able to click on things and be able to 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 see exactly what break it down more and more and more into its its uh, the definitions of each one of these items, and that's that's what I'm working on right now. That we have the data now, I want to be able to uh, to push it to, to to be able to display the specifics of how this how this uh, how each neuron and what what components of that neuron um, means as far as the chemistry that's involved, the biochemistry. Yeah. Explain to people what these other tabs are here with uh, the different neurotransmitters, because I think that's one of the coolest parts about this. In addition to the, the list. Yeah. So if you if you go if, if you look at the neurotransmitter in in the, in the peptide receptors, or and you look at the neurons, you, each one of these is a breakdown of of. So so as you go down these tabs, each one is a breakdown by the type of neurotransmitter it is. So there's ACH, acetylcholine. Serotonin, dopamine, uh, etc. I think if you go all the way over to all, all the way over to the uh, uh, right, the uh, uh, sheets. Yeah, Pepti like FLP peptide. Yeah. So then, then you also have the di yeah the different peptides involved, <clears throat> and uh, all the information I can find. So what I've been doing is just going out to websites and different different. Places that have this information and just just getting it all into one spreadsheet, and then then like I said, now I'm trying to create a database that reflects the same information. Awesome. Very cool stuff. So now we have to figure out <laughs> we have to figure out a way to actually simulate this <laughs> this stuff. Right. Exactly. That's that's yeah. <laughs> that's, but, that's where uh, I'm at. But at least we're starting to lay down the. Uh, we're starting to look at the actual um, the data, so we can start to do that. So I think this is great. Very cool. So this is in the biological details folder under Drive right now, everybody. Uh, so you can you can check it out as well. Here's the here's the name of it. So feel free to click through to it. And uh, so, I, I see there are some links there. Do they point to the source of the data? Correct. Cool. Yeah, if you click on that, it'll take you to a website, typically, of what uh, yeah. exactly what the reference to that is, a paper or whatever it might be. That's I haven't played with it there. I've just, uh, I just put it into the spreadsheet. So. Awesome stuff. So let's see. Um, so let's say.
again, like I said last time, you know, the, the challenge here is trying to figure out what we don't know. And I think that's 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 the thing I really want to get out of the the way we represent this data, because this is the part that we can go back to these other researchers who maybe um, see that they have data to fill in some of these blanks. That's right. Great stuff. Awesome, Tim. Anything else? Nope. That's pretty much it. Right now. Well, that's plenty. That's a lot. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, uh, so Porg is uh, joining us, so we'll skip over him. Uh, Andre, how you doing, man? Oh, well, I have spent the last two weeks trying to um, find out why um, uh, when we run simulation from uh, completely the same uh, initial conditions, we get um, different results mm -hmm. after uh, several dozens of steps. Mm -hmm. Oh well, some experience in this uh, field, some thoughts, uh, some mm, uh, hypotheses which were uh, tested, uh, checked, but. Uh, Found as uh, not important for this uh, process, for this effect. So mm, the solution is still not found, but I think <laughs> uh, soon I will fix it finally. Okay. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, other things uh, around SPH. Uh, we have some thoughts about um, making better and more convenient architecture um, and so on because all this is connected with each other uh, Java version and our, our C++ version uh, we need to um, somehow uh, make all of this in complex more efficient to move forward. Oh, I think right now that's all. Okay. Have we have, have we been able to um, to look at building a muscle model yet? Um, and uh, how's it going with the um, the bounding the particles uh, thing with uh, making triangles that uh, are boundaries between uh, liquid and and, uh, and the soft tissue? Well, it's in very near, near plans, but um, it's the next step after uh, fixing uh, uh, the bugs or, well, some um, <laughs> strange features, like I mentioned just before, um, not to uh, mix uh, new stuff and some kind of errors or unexpected behavior. Uh, that's why I still not mm, work on uh, this new thing. <sighs> well, of course, I want to do it, but it's better. It's better to keep the process stable. Okay. I know. I know. If uh, if Mike were here, he'd say he's very excited. He's very excited to see that part uh, because it can back into his, uh, you know, his stuff that he's working on as well. So um, I, I think that um, even if there would be an early version of that, he would be excited to see it, um, to see if we can get actual you know, contraction happening inside of a, a, a set of particles um, in the way that a, you know, that a muscle cell would. So if you, uh, if you think it will make some sense to do it in parallel with uh, you know, fixing some of the non-determinism, I think even if it wasn't 100% deterministic, you know, he could still average over multiple runs, uh, potentially, um, and uh, you know, what you typically do with non-deterministic systems. Um, so, I know I, he's been asking me. He's like, "Hey, how's that thing going?" I'm like, "Well, Andre." So, uh, <laughs> uh, there is another reason um, because because oh no, uh, another reason. Um, because it's hard, it's hard to um, start this. Um, well, we can do it um, 
uh, hard coded uh, like some um, function which uh, generates initial uh, scene, um, but well, and another attempt is to um, use a file which contains all initial uh, conditions. File is better uh, because because of many uh, reasons. Um, yeah. But uh, this uh, functionality is not implemented yet. Uh, yet. But um, if we use uh, uh, generation of initial send in the program, hard code, it's uh, quite hard to uh, control it. It's better to do it manually once in the file. Uh, so two different kinds of difficulties from uh, to other uh, sites, that's why it's hard to start. But I think soon it will be finally completed, solved somehow. Yep. Okay. Understandable. Just uh, just asking. I know Mike. Uh, yes. It's it's uh, very cool. Moving forward, um, I think uh, the, I'm glad to see the discussion about SPH on the. On the forums, uh, I think um, um, Giovanni is making his way through the code. Also, some of these new discussions about uh, this bullet fluids uh, library could be interesting uh, down the road for you know where we take this um, and where we can maybe get some help from other folks. Um, so I think we should continue to to look into that. We finally got a reply after many months from that uh, that guy. <laughs> so you saw that and. Um, so maybe we should uh, think about what, how we should respond. And, uh, cool. Okay, Sergey, how are you doing? Uh, uh, as you saw, I started to think about how to improve old code, mm -hmm. uh, make this more readable and supportable in future. And uh, first of all, I make a diagram. Uh, which shown how the code will be uh, will be here. <laughs> uh, so I think I start to improve it, um, and uh, also also I downloaded a bullet fluid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to look how better uh, some function realized uh, in bullet fluid and compare our realization. And you were saying before with the meeting that uh, you you it already looks like it's not any faster. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> that's cool. Um, so now the question is just, uh, I think they they don't have as many features either, right? They don't actually have, they don't combine with soft bodies, is that right? Uh, yes. As I understand, uh, they don't need a, a very efficient version. <laughs> Maybe because uh, they think that their engine should work on any uh, platforms uh, with any devices. So uh, this is uh, a limit uh, for, for them. Okay. Uh, and uh, the task which they want to uh, solve with their engine, it's uh, not uh, a bi biological tasks uh, where uh, accuracy is very important. Right, right, yeah, that makes sense. They'll like have like a block floating in water or something and not an organism. Uh, yes. So, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, so I mean, those are going to be the kind of things that we're going to be able to do, uh, that we're going to be more focused on doing better than, than they would for just any standard game. But, um, so that's something that we can bring to the table. 
Um, what I'm hoping is that we could get a lot of other people to help us, you know, solve some of the other problems that uh, you know, could benefit from multiple eyes. So, all right. Cool. Also, it's good thing to it's good thing to compare our realization and another because it's very rare to get SPH, SPH or PCA SPH. Great. Uh, I have to say, yes, yes, yes. Oh, open yeah, cell realization. Yeah, they're all cool. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, and I have a note here that you were you were doing eighty percent of the code for the boundary particles. Is that? Uh, uh, it's finished. Uh, but Andre works now with uh, his part of task, and he tested and improved. Okay. Cool. But it's finished now. Okay. Awesome. All right. Anything else? No, no, that's all. All right. And Alex. Yeah. You promised. I promise next time, by the way, I think I'll move all the Siberians to the top just so that you guys aren't all at the end. Um, at the wage oh, that, that's fine. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. During, during the last two weeks, I mainly worked with parallelization of optimal neuron. Uh, basically, I switched from threads to processes and made it a bit more user friendly. It was really annoying when you have to first. Uh, send the process to sleep and then kill it with the killer or something like that. Now it should stop by control C. Uh, besides, I started to work with these new videos. Uh, to be honest, I never worked with OpenCV before, but it appeared to, appeared to be not difficult. The main problem now is how to track the, uh, the neuron which we are interested in. Um, Stefan answered me in the uh, mailing list, but to be honest, I'm not sure that this is helpful. Uh, the, the camera actually follows this neuron, but not exactly. It just goes around it, and uh, I I don't know how to how to get exactly the neuron. I mean, of course we can track the some area. Around it, but then uh, it will be not precise enough. Anyway, I think we should uh, make another meeting to talk about these details. Okay. So first thing I'll do is um, uh, I'm going to write another email to Andrew uh, Weeper and I'll just CC you and uh, Mike, and we can ask exactly that question because he's written a lot of the code that segments this stuff, and uh, obviously he collected the data. So I think he'll have um, a good insight into, into how to go about doing that uh, thing. So uh, that, and that. One more question. Uh, you said that uh, Dr. Jean maybe mm -hmm. will share some data with us, but do you know, uh, is it a video as well, or it's some text data, or what is going yeah, to be? I think some of it may be traces along the lines of what we started, the, the, the last thing that we worked with, the, um, the voltage traces for muscles. Um, and some of it will also be video. So I think we may get both. Okay. So um, the thing about it's, it's good it's good that you're starting to, to, to work with videos and that we have somebody on the team that is starting to play with that, because I think this uh, data that's recorded optically in a video is going to be more and more important, and it will be more and more of the kind of data that we get. The holy grail for, um, for our model, by the way, is um, voltage-sensitive um, fluorescent markers, OK? And they've been very hard to create for many years. But um, there are some papers that are just starting now where there's a, a, a molecule which will light up and indicate the change of the voltage of uh, the membrane. Um, and uh, Andrew has said that he's going to be starting to look at those 
in the next couple years. Um, and but for now we do calcium. Now why is that different? So in inside neurons, calcium is a much slower indicator. Calcium is a much slower indicator. So it's only it has time resolution out to about a second. So you can see when a neuron was active about a second after it's actually active, and the changes there are much are much slower. So it gives you a rough sense of what's active, um, and and different calcium sensors are, are faster and faster in time resolution, but they're fundamentally limited by the fact that calcium is always going to lag the activity of uh, voltage. Uh, voltage is the main thing the Hodgkin Huxley equations simulate. So if you had a readout of voltage, uh, you would have to have it be much faster, and it would be directly related to the activity of that neuron. So that's why voltage sensors are the holy grail. Um, if you had, well, if we had this movie, but with voltage sensors, it'd be much more accurate, much faster, and um, we would have a much stronger sense of what that neuron was doing. But that experimental technique is still very limited today. Uh, it's not, it's not used, and there really aren't any traces or movies created uh, about them today. But we're going to start to see that happening, and the better, the better those sensors get, and the more movies that are out there. Um, the easier it will be for us to uh, train up our models on, on raw data. So this is, to some extent, you know, the best we can do today. It's still very good because, I mean, nobody even has calcium level data on a lot of these neurons. That's just started in the last year or two. Um, so it's, it's the best that we can do for now. But um, what's most important is that we're really making a step which is, you know, in, in the future is going to get even better. So... Um, cool. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, anything else, anybody? Questions on, on what we've talked about? So Alex, um, for the stuff that you're doing, I think um, if you can be sure to put the issues into GitHub and uh, Mark yeah, okay. is working, that's great. Um, uh, Tim, I'm sure you're not done with this piece, but I see that there was a working tag on there. So, um, but as you as you stretch out in other things, let's do that as well. Let's all you know keep those things up to date. Um, by the way, there is a, a Tim and I were talking up, up earlier. There is a contributor from uh, Buenos Aires who volunteered to translate our site into Spanish. I think I'm going to mention that before. He's also been. Uh, I also pointed him at a visualization project. I pointed a few different people at. And he's had some. He's doing been doing some work in that. So in case you're wondering who. Gaston Gentile is um, on, on GitHub. That's uh, somebody that I've been interacting with. I'm encouraging all these people to post on the mailing list. Um, sometimes they're a little nervous about doing it. But uh, uh, if you're listening today, you're welcome to do that. Um, and other folks are sort of uh, in the wings as well. So there's definitely other people who've been contributing. Um, I'm hoping that you know they'll join us in the office hours in a week. Um, so you know, keep that post, keep that um, you know, where and anybody here is welcome to jump in on any of those things. So don't feel like you know you'll mess anything up. If you're curious about what's happening, just you know, just jump in and start uh, you know adding comments or offering suggestions. Um, it's it's an open source project. Um, all right, great. So um, let's keep let's keep on going. Um, oh yeah, and the last thing is I I don't have this concrete, but I mentioned this at the publication meeting. I'll say it again. Um, there is a good chance that at the end of this month, at the end of February, um, uh, I will be traveling to London. So um, folks who are in London like to meet up. Um, and uh, if you're not in London, uh, but you're close to London, um, I'd like to get there, then that's cool. Um, and um, also I know that there are folks who, who, who have come by a few times on IRC we're in London, so I may try to have a, a larger invitation as well um, for a day to like get the person. And uh, and then also earlier in February, I'll be up in LA, and I've already um, invited Tim and Christian to get coffee with me. So um, so I'll be meeting some folks up in person. Siberia folks, we're going to figure out a way to meet in person. <laughs> um, I think this is the year. I'm sorry that my previous attempts have fallen flat so far, but. Um, um, one way or the other, um, we just got to do it because um, I'd love to meet you guys in person. I really, really would. Um, let's find a way to make it happen. Okay, uh, great. So 
Uh, looks like uh, we're done 15 minutes early this time. Um, let's continue conversations over email. And uh, I will see you guys in two weeks. Thanks. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steven. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.